what's up YouTube? DJ Flame back here with another review. Uh, today we'll be talking about the DDJ Rev 1 by Pioneer. It's going to be uh, the DDJ Rev 7 Little Brother. Uh, this is a much cheaper controller. It's about 300 bucks for many of these normal retailers. Uh, I'm not going to get too into depth of how it works. Today's video is just going to be explaining that Stems works with this and it works really well. Uh, I'm using it with a math book, of course. Don't mind the noise in the background. My kids make a lot of noise and this is the only time I really have to shoot videos. This is the life of being a parent. All right, so I'll talk to you about the basic controllers and some of the functions that it has, all right? And then we'll get into the stems and I'll show you guys how that works, all right? Okay, here it is. Again, DDJ Rev 1 by Pioneer. This is gonna be the Rev 7's baby brother. Very small, compact, two channel mixer with uh, also gives you the options to add deck three and deck four on both sides. Uh, it's a battle style setup. So they switched it out from the SB3, SB2 that they had. It, uh, it's a big upgrade, huge upgrade. Uh, you're gonna have uh, toggles for your effects. You, know, you can toggle down like that, you can lock it, all right? It also gives you, and then that's on both sides here, both decks, all right? You have your shift key. This is gonna be a key button for a lot of things here. All right, you have your scroll knob here that allows you to scroll through the songs. And you can also just click it and it'll lock onto that or auto switch folders. All right, you have your load buttons on either side here. Uh, basic EQ, this uh, level depth is gonna be for your effects. Also filter on both sides, both decks to control your effect sounds and everything, ins and outs, all right. Uh, Again, that's the deck tempo, but it's pretty cool. I use this in 90% of my gigs. I have other controllers, but this is very compact and it has all the features you can ever want on the fly. Um, everything feels pretty decent quality. Uh, the uh, jog wheels on this are six inches. So I think, I, I forget the name of the controller. I had the same size as this, but they're six inches, so you guys can get a better understanding. I mean, it doesn't feel cheap at all. I, I believe this is the limited edition one too. Um, everything feels really, really good. Uh, you have the option to turn off the scratch feature. You could just, and again, that's where the shift button's incorporated into. You hold down the shift and the deck button, and it'll take off that scratch feature and it'll allow you just to control the tempo. All right, and uh, also if you, use the outer part of the jog wheel. Even when you're in scratch mode, it'll allow you to just correct the tempo, fix the tempo up and down. All right, and then if you touch this platter, again, it's gonna go back to the scratch feature. But you've got a lot of cool different features. Check it out. Today, again, I'm gonna be talking a lot about stems and that's gonna be built into my sampler. Um, so in order to set this up in Pioneer, I'm using Pioneer DJ Pro. Uh, you can go over to your sampler. I have it set up already, so it's gonna be a little different. You're gonna go to your little gear icon. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do this while holding the camera. And then down here, where it says replace, replace pad mode, make sure that's checked, and you can use either sampler or loop roll. Again, I use sampler because it's just easy to get to. I don't really use the sampler a lot. Uh, loop roll, some of you guys use it. I mean, I don't really play, play around with it unless I need to. Uh, but I leave that open to loop roll. Uh, again, sampler, I'm not using that in a lot of weddings and these kind of functions I do. So I just set it up to the sampler and you can come back up again to that little gear icon, brings you back over here. And um, it's pretty neat. Once you have that sampler set up, you'll have four options here. One's gonna be the vocals, all right? Melody, bass, and drums, all right? Uh, now, on this controller, well, on this specific controller, and also Serato, it allows you to do the effects out, which gives you, uh, I have, just so you guys can see it, oops, bring you back up to the right thing. Vocal, melody, bass, drums. Down here, it's veca, uh, vocal, echo, out, instrumental, echo, instrumental, breaker, and uh, drum, echo, out. Really, really cool. I played around with Virtual DJ a little bit this week. I only used it for like a half an hour. It didn't give me uh, all the options I needed. All right, again, uh, once we have a song queued up and you're ready to go, again, I'm gonna fast forward to this. I'm using non-copyrighted music today. Uh, just trying to keep it 
simple. I don't want any copyright strikes or anything. But uh, what you're gonna do is once you have a song queued up and just say you're on a scratch, scratch feature, you could hit the shift button and the deck button, vinyl button, that'll take you off. Oh, there you go. It'll take you off vinyl mode. It should take you off vinyl. Well, yeah. It'll take you off vinyl mode and uh, give you the option just to control the tempo up and down. Again, you hit shift again, deck. You got your scratch back, all right? But, uh, it, you know, your auto loops up here, uh, half time, I mean, half beat, you know, you can go two times. Your sync buttons, if you guys use sync, I don't really use sync. Um, sync anyway, it's just junk. Um, your trim for both decks up top, like I said, your basic EQ. This is gonna be your headphone. It has a standard 3.5 millimeter jack for your headphones. I have them hooked up to some, this is what I use, little cheap ear pods. All right. Uh, also now, when you are on scratch mode, you can also use the outer side when you're playing to adjust the tempo. But if you touch this, you're gonna have a problem. But if you just wanna use a tempo, you can touch the outside of it and it'll speed it up or slow it down. And then you touch this again, you're gonna be in trouble. Um, so now, as far as buttons go here, you have your uh, hot cue button, could be on, uh, also you have your choice of beat jump here, auto loop, you could do your roll section, your tracking, trans, and sampler, scratch bank, all right? This also has a scratch bank in there. There's other videos that have that information on it. I'm, I don't play around with a lot of these things. So again, to use that, shift, hot cue. That'll bring you over to your beat jump. So if you got a song playing, and you want to hit. Oh. Well, I just speed up and fast forward and rewind. Uh, all right, and you also have your roll. I believe it goes up. It slows down as you go up. This last button doesn't do anything, but allow you to speed it up, slow it down, do different effects with it. Uh, get off that. So you have that, and you also have tracking. If you guys haven't heard about tracking on this, it's pretty damn cool. I'll show you on the other deck real quick again. So if you wanna get to tracking, you just hit that, and you'd have to have a hot cue set up for this. On this side, I think I have it done. So I'm gonna have my, uh, go to my hot cue. I'll try this one. Ready, we'll go over this hot cue. This is to set this up. You could select the FX2 on this one and then go to tracking, okay? Tracking is gonna give you the uh, six options that you have here. These other two buttons don't work. Uh, you gotta play around with this to, to try to understand how it works. It basically just helps you scratch and it's gonna use it as a, uh, I'll show you guys what it sounds like. So if you have your song, we're gonna rewind it. So I'm gonna go back up to my hot. All right, so if you're back here at your hot cue and you hit tr tracking and you hit this, just say this. It's gonna act like that. You have that just like you're scratching and open up the fader this is going to act like a fader basically it's just going to act like it's opening the fader on when you're pulling back pull it forward see it won't do anything it'll bring you back to your cube you see up here it'll, it'll lock that in place and there you go you got different options I'm not sure exactly what that is, a little choppy, but I mean, it doesn't sound bad. It sounds pretty cool, but you have that option as well in here. Uh, you can also go to your uh, sample, or well, scratch bank, you can hit, the, again, hold this, hit the sampler, all right? That'll bring you up to this. I don't know exactly what these do. I haven't played around with a lot of this stuff, but you do have different features in here. Again, I don't know how to play with it. I'm not gonna mess with it right now. Uh, it'll bring you back to your cue points, but. But, all right, so again, stems works really well on this deck. Um, I mean, you have to have the right computer to do it. Or if you don't have uh, the processor that requires the CPU 
or M1 or whatever they require right now for stems, you could uh, you can also just stick all any song that you want into the stems folder, all right? And I'll analyze it and it'll basically be stems ready. But I do that to a lot of these songs just to, you know, I, again, the stems on the fly thing, I'm not gonna use it all the time. All right, I set up a song real quick just so you guys get the idea of it. Again, this is pre-analyzed already. Uh, it's not working the best on this, on these particular songs, so I'm not familiar with them. But if you uh, pull them up, you have the song playing. And I just want vocals. I cut these three out. I want to add some melody to it. I want to add bass. Just bass. No drums. I want to go back to drums. And that's just the instrumental. Just the melody. Just the bass and melody. Now you could instrumental breaker. This will break it. Break the instrumentals. Here we go. And then you could also instrumental echo out. Or you can echo out the instrument or the vocals. But it's pretty cool. Uh, it gives you the option as well to do a lot of other things. Uh, you guys gotta play around with it. I would say pre-analyze your STEM stuff beforehand if you don't have a, a computer strong enough. I definitely have to upgrade. Uh, I know you need an M1 minimum MacBook if you're gonna use MacBook or Windows i5, sixth generation or something like that. But uh, keep watching, you know, check out my videos, see if there's more. I wish I knew more about this controller again. I'm playing around with it, um, you know, trying to learn everything about it. Uh, I, I have this thing separately hooked up right now. It has RCAs out, unbalanced. So what I did is I took those from RCA out to quarter inch jacks. I have an a additional mixer down on the bottom here. A uh, little Harbinger six channel mixer. But Bluetooth, so it gives me an option for Bluetooth since I'm using RCS, they don't have Bluetooth. Um, but you go from that to XLRs out, so you could kind of balance everything out. Uh, it sounds a lot better. It also gives you a lot more headroom. If you guys aren't using a mixer, I suggest you guys buy one. Just buy something cheap. It's halfway decent, it has a, a good sound card in it because the sound card in this is okay, it's not bad, but it's definitely not the best. Uh, again, you could do this stuff on the fly with this, with Serato. If you're using a uh, Tidal or any of those uh, record pools, but it's not the best on this. I'm, I mean, it, once I get a better computer, it'll be a lot. All right, guys, keep watching my videos. Please like and subscribe so I can bring you guys more content. I'm trying my best here. Uh, I work a lot, I work a full-time job besides this. I don't have all the, uh, all the time in the world to do this. And my brain's kind of in another area. All right, keep watching.